Hello then folks, you catch me back in my CRZ, I call it TIE Fighter, uh, taken over from Kat for the day just because she is not very healthy. We're off now to go and see a fellow called Lee and his many cars, but more of that when we get there. Uh, this morning I've been filming with Michael and his VW Golf GTI 8 valve special, which is a rarity because of its um, the late production, the things that are on it, the certain amount that were made, certain amount that were sold, the fact that it's only sold in Europe, and all those bits and pieces. At the moment, and especially more recently, I've really started to notice that there's lots and lots of um, base models of cars which you just would not have thought of at the time as becoming classics, now becoming classics. People are loving and cherishing these cars. Today we're going to go and see a perfect example of that. This is a BMW E30. It's got quite a few little rarities about it. The fella called Lee who cherishes this car looks after it and is keeping it going. Uh, so we're almost there. We're going to crack on just a few more minutes down the road and I'll catch up with you when we get there. So the E30 BMW is the second in the series of their three series production. Uh, the E21 was before that, and the E30 came in in around about 1983, I believe. A couple of different engine options and stuff like that, uh, all the way up to the BMW M3, which was, I think, the two litre four cylinder in this model. But with this car that we're gonna go and see, it's right at the start of the production line, and they actually used up quite a few bits from earlier cars. I'll let Lee explain more about that. But um, that's what puts it in the category of being the rarity. But then on top of that, because it was at that age, that spec, that trim level, uh, it was actually one of the ones that most people would have scrapped, thrown away, or just been waiting for the newer engine, better model, or newer models to come out. Um, so it is actually now becoming a point where some of these cars that we used to see about on a daily basis are getting rarer and rarer to see now on the roads, let alone in, in this sort of condition. Lee spends loads and loads of time, effort and money trying to get the cars that he's got up to scratch, keeping this BMW on the road, keeping it running, um, and that is really shown in the condition of this car. I met Lee at a Southwest Classic Car Club meet, the same that I met Michael at, um, and had a little chat about his car, and I knew instantly that it was just something I had to try and feature on this channel to show you guys. It's absolutely awesome. So we're just literally a couple of minutes away now. Uh, I'm gonna hit the road and we'll crack on. Let's go and see this BMW E30. Right then guys, made it to the meeting spot. Uh, this is Lee, and as you've seen from a few of the clips, there's some absolutely wicked cars here, but there's also one or two cars not here, which would be absolutely wicked to see in a future date, um, which I reckon we'll probably get together and do some, uh, yeah, do yeah. some more videoing of. Um, there's the E30, which we're gonna be uh, talking about today, named Bertie. 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 Yeah, yeah that's right. So Cat meets Bertie. So Lee, just a bit, a bit about yourself. What, what was your kind of background in classic cars and stuff? Background in classic cars. Uh, basically uh, brought up with classic cars. Uh, Parents into classic cars that you told before, you know, like a talk basically, it was drummed into the classic cars. Yeah, yeah. I think when I was born, I was brought home from the hospital in a classic car. What was it? Uh, it was, it was a Corti, that's 1600V. Was it? Yeah. Oh, nice. That it's, is a cool first car to Yeah, yeah you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool car. You know? And then when you kind of started driving, what was your. My, my cars when you got like your first car. My stuff. first car was a Mini, um, as, yeah. as everybody does, a uh, yeah, yeah. uh, little 850 Mini. I really uh, fancied a Mini. Yeah, first yeah, that's I right. think when you're, when you're young looking at it. I think everybody's got everybody's got a weird emotion. Yeah. You know, it runs brilliant one minute and then breaks down and, you know, and the next minute the things there. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, a Mini Cooper, a Mini, a Mini Cooper S, oh, nice which, thing, I, yeah. uh, which I sold for uh, next to nothing. I wish I, uh, that was a massive regret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, a Mark III Astra, so something sensible back then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah a, sens a sensible car. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and actually, like especially maybe that Astra and stuff is going to be the sorts of things that we're going to be talking about today in terms Definitely, of yeah. stuff that might well have been thrown away. Yeah, it's it, it, just a nothing car. Just a nothing car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, what, what is it about the E30? Um, you were mentioning about the fact you've got it as a bit of a stopgap from the another E30, car. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, before I had the E30, I've had it since 2007. Yeah. And it was a daily driver for six or seven years. Yeah, and yeah. Talking all winds and well and things, isn't it? But what I did, um, I was into Japanese cars. I was uh, in my younger days, I was into the boy racer, Japanese yeah, yeah. car. Yeah, yeah, so I uh, had a Nissan Pulsar. 
Yeah. And uh, you could do a brilliant thing, but I wanted to upgrade to um, a WRX uh, Impreza. Yeah. And couldn't afford it at the time, you know, didn't have enough money. So Again, it's one of the dreams, isn't it? One of the dreams at the time, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I bought it for uh, a stock car, 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 basically, for a couple of months until I managed to save some funds yeah. to get the Impreza. Could have been double, I never owned it, never, never, never owned it, and uh, just fell in love with it. Yeah. You know, it's just a, it's just one of those cars, and it's just, yeah, a, yeah. it's just an icon, I think, you know. It and, is, yeah, uh, yeah. He's, 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 he's right up there, I think people have got it right, got yeah, it right, yeah. 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 And uh, everything, I think you see the blood lines, the little later, in 46, yeah. like, 26, 46, even for the, the more modern car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, yeah, the, the 46 is the most modern car I've got, and it's probably been the most troublesome as well. Yeah. Yeah, probably been the most <laughs> yes. troublesome, yeah, yeah, as, you know, as we, we discussed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, it's, um, it's, it's a little bit modern for me, but because it's, it was a very low mileage car and uh, a low mileage car as well, I thought I'll pick it up and I'll play with it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so it's been it's been reliable, fairly reliable ever since. You know, with the odd uh, um, uh, electronic gremlin, but nothing yeah. major, and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were literally just chatting about the fact that you, you, there's a point when you stop spending on cars, but with a car like that, because of the condition it's in, yeah, Lee's right. finding it quite hard to find Definitely. that point because it's, yeah, it's going right. to be you know it's going to be yeah. adding value to the car Definitely. now rather than if it was in average condition, we'd say 150 thousand miles. I think it just would have gone. Yeah, on eBay, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and they just would have cut the losses and go. Yeah, can yeah. you can't bring yourself to sell it. Well, normal people would, but we would. <laughs> It's an addiction, it's, it yeah. is an addiction. Yeah. End up on eBay till stupid hours in the morning, oh, looking at cars you can't afford. Yeah, the, the, the eBay, the, 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 there should be a passport on eBay that yeah. you can't get on it, especially <laughs> after the two shandies and things. Yeah, yeah. So this uh, this E30 here, you yeah. had to do much to it? It has had some little things, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's had a wing thing, it's had a uh, little bit of rear arch with bits and pieces, but um, we did do an air gasket, my, my father and myself, we yeah, nice, did yeah. an air gasket for somebody to do on a Sunday afternoon in the winter and things. Yeah, yeah. Apart from that, it's a relatively reliable car for going yeah. on a 35 year old car. You don't realize how old these cars are. Yeah, that's it. I think a lot of people think they associate a classic car as like 60s cars, yeah. you know, and they, but you think about well, it, they, 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 they the mid 80s cars are going on 35 years old, yeah, now, so yeah, yeah. they are getting up there in years as well. Yeah, for the original, um, it's, 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 uh, it's a rare one to be obviously on this one. It's, um, it's nothing, nothing special to to do, but it's uh, the only ever made 280 of the actual spec. Yeah. So it's uh, basically it's um it's, it's an M twin, so it's got this it's the carburetor engine. Yeah. It's an automatic transmission, and it's on the throttle wheel from the series one to the series two. Yeah. Whereas it's got the old front end on it with glass headlights, the three slightly face headlights. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the rear basically plastic roof face headlights. So from the later cars. With the, from the later cars. Yeah. With the chrome trim on the wheels, so they only ever made two hundred and fifty for white and battery in the last spec. So yeah. Very tricky. I chatted briefly about in the in the intro that the 83 when they first came out this engine would have been up there with the sorts of engine you'd expect to see in other cars but getting on for 87, they would have known that the injection, more modern engine was coming. Exactly, yeah. I, I think that's the reason why the car, the car at the time, probably in 87, wasn't the most sought after model. Yeah. Because everybody wanted the newest, latest yeah, model, which yeah. would have been like the M30. Like and the there probably year. would have been quite a lot of hype about it. There would have been a, a lot of adverts and like in the media yeah, and things like yeah. that. And I think the older generation of cars, because the M10 engine runs from the, 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 w, the 2 w 2 so it runs, yeah. it runs from the mid 60s. This, when it, before it was sold to the original owner, it would be the head as it had off in the main wheel to be converted to unleaded petrol. So it must because have been one of the worst ones, that it was one. Yeah, it was, it was, it was actually made to run on leaded too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's right. You always think it's not original on it. The car's fully original, but it did come with the original car bread. It was a Piper Bird. Okay. Um, I think it was a 2D4 and it was heavy car bread. Yeah, uh, yeah. They had uh, an elephant choke system and they used to stick them on, yeah, stick yeah. out the stick on it. Early electronics, yeah. So it would spread me one day, it'd drive by, and the next day it'd drive, it wouldn't be through another one. Yeah, yeah. So it's running in the single choke weather. Uh, yeah. The only difference is it, it transforms the car and makes it give it a little bit of effort and a bit of work. Yeah. And it does actually, uh, it, uh, it does give it a little bit more power and drivability. Yeah, cool. The only yeah, thing yeah. is, you've got to revert back to a manual choke. So, you just, uh, what I've done is I've a retrofit with a manual choke. Yeah. Just, so, you just pull the choke when you start a car cold. Yeah. So, it's all in the back of my it's, uh, it does, it's, it's better on film as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas with the no brain then, to change it. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, and I think the overlap is too much quicker than the day when I'm going to change it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, were, they were relatively inexpensive. Yeah. 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 I reckon if uh, if you don't mind, we'll jump in and have a, Definitely. a little we'll drive. We'll go for right, yeah, we'll see take, how it goes. Take yeah. in some uh, local Let's shooting. And Let's do it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> it's a plan. Yeah. Catch up with you guys in a minute.
So here's the, uh, the engine bay we've just been chatting about. Um, head gasket job uh, and the Weber carb you can see there. Um, a little bit of a tweaking upgrade for sort of reliability um, that Lee did uh, a couple of years ago. But it's all very, very standard stuff in here, but very clean uh, and original condition. It's absolutely looking brilliant. And also we've just been laughing about this. <laughs> Is, uh, Plug for the, 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 the service light. Diagnostics, basically en all engine diagnostics. Is, all it does is switches on and off the service light. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a, that's a very very early version of a diagnostic plug. Early right OBD. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, cracking engine bay, and uh, we were just saying with a with a very brief rub around with a rag. It's look it looks so nice and clean, um, an original condition, making this uh, very very lovely rare car. Quarter survivor, it's managed to survive relatively unscathed. Yeah. And it's done, it's done the mileage as well, it's coming up just under 100,000 miles. Yeah, so it's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's done a few, isn't it? It's, it's lived a bit of life, you know, for, yeah, uh, yeah. for that old car, shall we say. It's really, really nice. Yeah. I say just this condition. We were chatting actually about the sunroof, it's an interesting little fact about the cars. Yeah, um, the, um, a BMW E30 without a sunroof is a very rare animal. Because um, a sunroof was, was a basic option. It's actually rarer to, to have one with a sunroof delete. Um, and they are quite sought after because they are worth relatively more money purely because it's the a rare option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. In the 80s, everybody wanted a sunroof. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, the, the, the Wham CD on the, and yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. On the tape <laughs> and the stereo and the sunroof. Yeah, yeah. flap about the top. Yeah, that's when the booth on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so nice. I think just. Uh, testament to to Lee there's a there's a stereo in here because it's nice to have some music on but they've actually still got the original the original sat the, the in the car aren't you low punk stereo is actually under the driver's seat then yeah yeah because it's a, a relatively low spec model it didn't actually come with a, a tape deck as it would have had a day it's yeah. just actually a radio it is yeah yeah but I think I think with the with the style of car when we were talking about the engine changes and stuff earlier but yeah. to have those sort of things yeah to be able to pop back in for originality exactly, is really, yeah. really, really cool. the option to put it back in yeah, yeah the other thing which it's got as well, it's got the original torch, as uh, normally gets lost as well in the in the dashboard. Um, all three series is from the uh, the 2002. They came with um, a, uh, an inspection torch on the dashboard. All oh, right. And even to this day, they come with um, an inspection torch even in the uh, the, the latest three latest series. Ones. I didn't the know that. Ones, yeah, and this one is still. <laughs> I'm the, learning today. I'm learning a lot. It still has the original torch with the uh, with the registration printed on it as well. That yeah, is very yeah, cool. Yeah, that's right. It's, I mean, at just. Every single conversation I yeah. seem to have with Lee adds to the, yeah, the rarity right. of this car. <laughs> I'm a hype of useless information. Yeah, 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 that's right. yeah, but no, it's absolutely incredible. And like when, when I very first sat in it, just to come out for the first first drive, shutting the door and, and sitting in it, you can just feel the the BMW sturdiness. It's been like, comes like, like, like an old German tank. It's yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Something really to look after, isn't it? And exactly. The, the, the car that everybody wanted at the time was obviously the M3. Yeah. Uh, but the lesser one would have been the uh, the, the 325. But being such a, a low production numbered car, it uh, it's basically rarer than uh, than the, the not so much the M3, but the, but the, the, the 325 is actually rarer. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And it um, it's uh, it, it, it would have been the car at the time where nobody would have wanted. It would have been the car that would have just sat there and. Uh, even in 87 it would yeah. be very old technology daily driven for a couple of years and, and traded in driven. and scrapped and all sorts exactly. over the years yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. oh it's mental so a massive thanks to lee for, for letting me come over and see this car well, today it's, it's been, been brilliant it's been a fun afternoon yeah yeah definitely <laughs> nice to have some car banter isn't it random, definitely 100%, random yeah. car banter like-minded obsessive people that's yeah. it yeah that's right that's so right. as i've uh, as we've had a little look at the very start of this video lee's got um a, a small well a small fleet of of cars um, and he's been in the motor trade for a, a good few years, uh, buying and selling as well, haven't that's you? Right. Yeah, Done yeah. a little bit of importing two, of two American different cases. Cars, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is awesome. So he's got an absolute well, number one wealth of knowledge about uh, this car and others that he's got, and he's also got a, a nice little fleet. Which you make um, me blush. Yeah, yeah. He's invited <laughs> me down to come and see again. So we're definitely going to be looking out for for Lee in a future episode of Cat Meets with a few of his, his other machines, which would be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.
Right here, folks, that was uh, TIE Fighter, again, CRZ, meets Bertie, the uh, E3316. What a cracking machine that is, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and again, I mean, with uh, Michael on the previous episode, Lee as well, uh, and myself, very guilty of it. We really don't appreciate enough the car that we own, uh, and we are very, very critical of our own work and our own car. And Lee is very, very much like that. He's got a, a little list of niggling things in his head which he just really wants to get done. And he's more than happy to point those things out to you when you're chatting to him about his car. But um, from an outside perspective, mate, you've got an absolute corker there. It's a really, really nice car. So thanks so much to Lee for having me over today to go and have a little look at that car. As you might have seen from the opening clips of this video, he's got another couple of cars which he said he'd be happy to show me around. So I'm hopefully, over the next couple of months, I might make another couple of trips down to Lee. Um, to go and have a little look around those and do some cat meets videos. Hopefully you get some nice pictures with the uh, Capri as well with those cars, especially that E30, because I think the two of them together would look really, really cool. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. It's been a pleasure having you along. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. Have a little look at my other stuff. It's all about cat, my Mark III, four Capri. And this series is really taken off now, the cat meet series. I've met up with some really amazing folks and really cool cars. If it's something you're interested in doing, please drop me an email. I'll pop that right here, but I'll also put it in the description below. Just send me an email with a couple of pictures of what you've got. For now, I'm gonna leave you with a few more to go and check out. So first of all, I'll pop up the Golf, which I filmed this morning, posted a few days ago. That is a Mark II GTI 8 valve special. I'll pop that video right here. Here is James's 2.1 litre S4 Capri. Here I'll pop up the 3 litre Capri, which is my old shell. And here there's gonna be a little button. Hit it, it will subscribe you to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on a future episode. Until next time, drive safe.